Hey, hey, everybody, this is Larry. This is day 14 of the November League Go Daily Challenge. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, join me on Discord. Let me know what you think about today's farm. Um, so I actually have pretty good eyesight, but I'm trying this thing. It's, so where I am right now, it is 10 p.m. in New York. Um, so I'm trying this boo blocker thing, so we'll see how that goes. Uh, let me know oh, how... <laughs> Let me know if I look good or too nerdy or whatever. I, I'm trying to find a good pair. Uh, these are kind of cheap, but it seems to work because I did a couple of testing on, on Boo, um, on Boo Light and stuff like this. Uh, so yeah. But anyway, so I'm just trying to kind of fix my sleep schedule a little bit. Um, so yeah. Uh, so don't worry, I'm still me, and I still have pretty good eyesight in the day, I guess. Anyway, today's problem is if you're wondering. Uh, today's problem is 9.47, most stones removed to the same rows or column. So given a 2D plane, you put N stones in each corner, may have at most one stone. A stone can be removed if it shares the same row or column as da 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 da. That has... Stone can be removed if it shared either the same row or same column as another stone that has not been removed. Okay. Uh, let me re is there a way to rephrase it? That's such an awkward phrase. Remove this. Okay. Mm. I have to draw this out, don't I? This is like, I wish they had one visualization. But okay, so you have. Uh, uh, okay, let me, let me draw it out. Hang on. Usually I have a variation of this problem. That's why I'm trying to make sure that I understand this correctly. And yeah. So I'm just getting my drawing utensils. In my sexy glasses. All right. Uh, so let's say we have, you know, this is the axis. Right. So we have, let's see, one stone at zero, zero, one stone at zero, one. Wait, zero, one is here, right? Maybe. I always confused. Zero, one, one, zero. Okay, fine. Uh, one, two. Which one is one, two again? Yeah. Is it this one? X, Y, right? Okay. 2, 1. Okay, fine. And then 2, 2. So something like this. Okay. <clears throat> so we have six stones and we could remove five of them. Um, what's one way to say? So basically we could... I guess we do it like in a reverse order almost, right? So like, let's say we could remove this one, then this one, this one, this one, this one. This is not quite the order that they did it, but... Um, okay. I mean, it feels like it's just like... um. Because, mm. okay, so my first instinct was this thing where, you, have, you know, you have connected components and of all the connected components, you basically have to keep one because there's only one left and then you just count the number of forces or number of connected components or something like this. But I don't know that it is co correct per se. What if I have something like this? Let me see. What if I have something like this? Then I remove, I guess then we still keep just the middle one instead of, so it doesn't, it's not... I mean, still connect the component, but you don't have to go like, you know, one to one to one to one, almost like a thing. So, okay. So, I, I think right now I'm just trying to prove to myself that this is correct. Um, so I have this like idea or theory or theorem or whatever. Um, and of course, not quite sure. But all right, let's see. What is the other? This is second problem. So, uh, mm, yeah. I'm trying to remove these in a good way. Yeah, I find. Uh, just delete this and delete this. Okay, whatever. Pretend this is good for now. All right, so zero, 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 two. Let's just say it's here. Okay, I have to use the other thing to draw. Zero, two, one, one, two, zero, one, two, two. Okay, so here, yeah, we, the connected components are these four and then this thing. And then, okay, so that. I think that sounds right. So let's at least give it a try. I think so, yeah. Because basically you want to, the order doesn't, the order of the removal doesn't really matter in that case, right? So you're just basically, um, yeah, so the order of the removal doesn't matter. So if you have a connected component based on either X or Y, then I'm still trying to prove that in my head. Then I guess you could think about it as some sort of um, 
Mm. I guess there's a topological sorting, is that right? Mm. That's not quite the right way of saying it, because you can have a cycle too. Um, but what I, what I want to say is that that means that there is... I think one way to think about it is that the way to think about it for this connected component, for me, at least for the proof, because I think this is actually, I'm, I'm kind of confident about it, but I think it's just about articulating it, the proof a little bit. I think the way that I would think about it is thinking about the connected components as a tree rooted in one of the nodes. And the node that you, and you could root it, you know, just like a def, regular depth for search tree, right? And if you actually doesn't even have to root it in, you don't have to root it in any particular one. You can just keep it unrooted or root it in a random node. It doesn't really matter. So now you have this depth for search tree. And in this depth for search tree, um, which simplifies the problem a bit, if you have a depth for search tree, you can kind of just always delete a leaf, right? And if you could always delete a leaf, that means that if you have n component or n nodes on a, on a tree, you have n minus one leaves to remove or like, you know, so, okay, so I think from that perspective, I am now convinced about the proof. Hopefully that makes sense. I was just thinking about it in my head, working it out. Um, so yeah, and because I wasn't sure whether, like maybe there's some weird thing where, you know, the order doesn't matter, but maybe I'm convinced this time. Um, okay, so yeah, let, let's get started then. So the two ways to do this maybe, with connected components, you can always do it top down or, or, or well, there's that first search version, there's um, web first search version, there's a uh, union find version. Today, I'm just going to do it with, yeah, with that first search, why not? Let's do it. Right. <clears throat> um, and then basically, do, 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 we could do it in a couple of ways. Right. We, don't, we could have a different... Um, We could do it in a different dimension or whatever. I don't know if that, that's quite the word, but um, we don't have to create an explicit adjacency matrix or even adjacency list. I think we can do something like this. The only thing is, no, I think this is good. I, uh, the only thing that I worry about is that we do duplicate work, but I think this is actually okay. For, uh, or like, if we're careful about it, we should be okay. So for example, here then xs.append index, or xs of x. And then now we just do for i in range of n. Mm, so x, y, or, or maybe just do this again, actually, I guess. Right, and maybe what we've done is zero to four times n, just to keep it simple, and then like a total count, right? And then if not done of index, we go index, I suppose. Yeah, or you know, do something like this, minus one or something like this. Um, and then you have def of um, go of index, right? Make this smaller. <clears throat> so total uh, count is equal to zero, return count. And then here, um, I guess count is always one if you have to do it. Okay, and then if x, uh, okay, so x, y is equal to stones of index. And so maybe we don't even need to do it here, but oh well. And then what are we doing, right? Basically, if x is in xs, and it always is, but the reason why I write it this way is that um, you'll see in a second. For j in xs of x, then go of j, right? if not done of j. Because you may hit it from the other dimension, right? Then count, increment by that. Um, yeah, and at the way you end, we want to delete excess of x so that in the future you don't do it again for that x for any reason. I don't know that that's necessary, but I think that we can do it anyway. The reason is because if you're coming from another index of the same x, 
it doesn't matter anyway that means that you're already by by uh, i don't know what the proof is but or i don't know how to say the the, the name of the proof but the, the idea is that you you already came from like there's no other way to come from here from another thing because you already would have hit it so maybe we don't even need to delete it but i i i don't know maybe i'm just a little bit careful here but uh if not done of j um yeah and i think that's good enough for me to give it a spin i forgot to return though so that's not quite good enough but um hmm, that's weird oh because it includes itself wait is that true hmm No, but then if it if it's always oh, because this goes to the thing and then hmm. I see. I, I did it in a little bit of a wrong order. So I think because what what was happening is that it keeps on recursing and then it keeps on um on the recursion on the same x it just goes that again so what we want to do is actually something like um yeah, something like this maybe um so that we basically make sure that further recursions don't this is the worst copy and paste ever it doesn't even have that much um yeah oops Okay, this looks good for the input. Let's give it some mid just because I'm lazy. Maybe there's an edge case, but today I am on the lazier side. It looks good. Have I not solved this before? Hmm. I didn't look for it. I don't remember. But hmm, first submission, maybe. Anyway, um, yeah. So the complexity here, and this is what I want to be really careful about, which is why I did it this funky way. The, um, the complexity, oh, I just want to I just double check to make sure that I didn't have my painting up on the board because that would have been really uh, not great <laughs> and I've been describing it wrong the entire time but yeah um, the complexity is why I kind of do all these funky things because I want to make sure that uh, the invariant is that we only um, we only hit up each index once not even just to check right because if you have to do this for loop even if if it doesn't do the recursion it's still going to be O of n times and if you're not careful this is going to be n square given in that case did I do a good time here? Yeah, I did an okay time. So I think I didn't do n square by accident. And it's way easy to kind of do that by accident. I think if you just do it this way, um, let's see if this one's, um, yeah, uh, mm, let's give a submit just to see how long, much longer it would be. Maybe the, hmm, okay, maybe I lied then, I don't know. So the, the thing is that what I wanted to prevent is that in future recursions, and because by, by definition, when you rec do a recursion on this thing, right, um, they have the same x. And in that x, if you keep on doing this, then, well, it's going to be n squared because everyone will have, in the, in the, if you keep track of the recursive stack, in that stack, this would have, um, like, basically, you're doing like n, the first one does n and then the second one does a bunch of n and so forth right so for each one it would do a for loop of n elements if if they're all in the same line for example and that's going to degenerate into n square if you're not careful which is why they're this way you could have done it other way as well like market is done or something but, but i think this is the same idea um so in that case it would only do two times n instead so yeah um, but yeah, otherwise, this is a pretty straightforward connected component part. Um, we only call the go index, uh, we only call go once per, or twice maybe because of the J, uh, of, of X and Y. But either way, oh no, that's not true because of this done. So yeah, so that means that this is going to be, um, you know, linear time and linear space. Um, yeah, that's pretty much all I have. 
Um, I think the, the one more thing I wanted to add, and this is linear time, linear space, because we kind of keep the track of the indexes in this way and, and kind of allow us to use the implicit uh, graph um, or implicit edge list based on this graph and the knowledge, right? Um, if you were to, to create an adjacency list or an adjacency matrix, either one of those things, it would actually degenerate into n square space, right? Just because that's the size of your edges. And of course, you have n square edges, then it probably, you, well, it takes n square time to generate that, those edges. So um, that's going to be n square in both cases. So you have to be careful about that. Um, otherwise, that's pretty much all I have for this one. Um, you probably could have, if you, if you solve this one and you think, it's too easy for you. I'm um, trying to do it with union fine. And if you did th that way as well, you know, maybe try it the other way or, you know, give yourself a pat in the back a Sunday or Monday, depending on where you are. And, you know, another long week is coming up. So, you know, rest up. Um, but that's all I have for this one. Let me know what you think. Stay good. Stay healthy. To good mental health. I'll see you later and say hi to my plant. Bye-bye. <laughs>